Hi everybody, welcome back. Now, the sky is blue, the sun is out, the birds are singing, and it means that spring is just around the corner. And with it being spring, it means that the season of touring is just upon us. Now, depending on how you handled your caravan through the winter, whether you're like us, you used it, or whether you put it away into storage, there are a few things that we can all do around the caravan to ensure that it's gonna work first time when we arrive on site. Now, last year I produced a really handy little guide which went through some items that we should all check around our caravan and just make sure that everything is working correctly. Now, this does not replace the need for you to have a service on your caravan. In fact, if anything, you should have your service before you go away and do these items. So the first thing we need to do today is we need to wake the caravan up, which means we need to put some power into it and we're gonna go look at the leisure battery right now. So depending on how you looked after your battery in the winter, depends on what you obviously do right now. Now, you could have disconnected your battery completely, you could have taken it home, put it on a trickle charge, left it in the caravan, connected it to a solar panel. You know, the, the options are endless. We left ours in the caravan because two reasons, we use the caravan throughout the winter, but also we have a solar panel connected to the front window. Um, have a look at our solar installation, at this video up here. So it depends on what you did with your battery, depends obviously what you need to do. But regardless of what you did with the battery, there is a check we can do on it to make sure it's okay. And that is to take a resting voltage check of the battery. What we need to do is ensure that the battery is disconnected from anything, be it the caravan, be it a battery charger, be it anything. Make sure it's disconnected for at least two hours and then we're going to measure the voltage. Now, I'm gonna put some graphics up here which basically shows you what we're looking at in terms of the numbers. If your battery reads 12.0 or less, it means the battery is discharged or flat. If it's really beneath the 12 volts, it probably means it's knackered and you will need to replace it. If it reads 12.8 or higher, it means your battery is fully charged. Now the 12.8 is a magic number because anything between 12 and 12.8 can give us a range of how charged or how discharged the battery actually is. So for instance, if your battery was reading 12.4, well, the difference between 12 and 12.8 is about halfway, of course. That clearly shows us the battery is about 50% charged. So those are the magic numbers you need to be aware of, but that is a really rough guide on how to tell how charged your battery actually is. So once we're happy with the battery and that it's all okay, we need to reconnect it back up to the caravan. Now ours is permanently connected anyway, because as I said, we have a solar panel, but it's a good idea to check the contacts, make sure they're not corroded, make sure they're not fouled up. So give them a good look over and if need be, give them a bit of a clean with some emery cloth, just something to take the top layer of corrosion off of the terminals if you have it. Once we're happy that the connection's all fine here, we need to nip inside the van and test the system. Right, testing the system really couldn't be any easier. What we just need to do is just switch the caravan on. And then what we're going to do is we're just gonna switch some lights on and make sure that everything is okay. It's a good idea at this point to just note down anything that's faulty or anything that's wrong, and then we can come back and fix those at a later date. Now the next important thing to do is to go through and look at our water system. Now throughout the winter, what we should have done is left all our taps open, kept the drain down valve open, make sure there's no water in the entire system and make sure it's empty of as much liquid as we possibly can get. Now is the time obviously we need to put water back into the system and test that it's all okay. And what we're going to do is we're going to test all the pipes, make sure that all the connections are all okay, make sure that we're happy that there's no leaks and no damage from the frost. At the same time, we're going to sterilize and clean our water system from our tank to our pipes to our taps, including the Aquarol as well. And we're gonna do that by using a product called PuraClean. This is the stuff here, link to this is down below. And we're gonna use eight teaspoons of PuraClean for our Aquarol, and it's going to completely purify and clean our water system. Now in truth, what we're going to do is we're gonna fill the Aquarol up, put the product into the Aquarol, top it up and run the system through. We're gonna make sure that we close our drain down tap. We're gonna fill our water tanks. We've only got a hot water tank. You may have a cold water tank as well, but make sure all the tanks are full, run it through the system, prime the taps as per normal. Make sure that the shower, the bathroom and the kitchen are all primed through. Even if you don't use the shower, make sure you do this because you wanna get rid of any bacteria out of the entire system. 
prime the whole system and then we're going to let it rest for a number of hours. Now PureClean say to let it rest between 1 and 12 hours. We're going to let it go for about 4 hours here because I've got limited time on the storage site today. Once we've run it through and we're happy with it, we're going to empty our aqua roll by pushing it through the pipework. And then we're going to top up this system with fresh water from a fresh aqua roll and we're going to run it through again. In truth, we're going to use two aqua rolls full of fresh water to run through all the taps, the sink, the shower, the kitchen, and we're going to run it through into our waste as well. Now, PureClean is specifically designed for water tanks, etc., including stainless steel vessels, and you probably might use some of the PureClean tabs anyway when you're on sites with uh, mucky water, for instance. So now that we've done the water system, we need to go back outside and we need to check the hitch is all okay. And for that, I'm going to put some rubber gloves on. Right, the hitch. Now, hopefully when you parked up for the winter, you did cover your hitch to reduce the point of any moisture getting in and spoiling any of the components at the front. So what we need to start with is a good visual check to make sure that nothing looks broken. Then once you've had a good look around everything, now specifically pay attention to the breakaway cable. What we're looking for is to make sure that nothing is frayed, nothing is broken. The cable itself is in good working order. If it is broken, frayed or looks damaged at all, it will need replacing. It's a legal requirement and it needs to be in good working order. Now the hitch head itself, many of the caravans today come with stabilizers in the hitch head. If you have got a stabilizer hitch head, have a feel around of your friction pads. Just put your finger inside and have a good grope around. Make sure that there's no grease, no grime, and there's no contaminants. If they feel shiny or if they feel that there is some deposits on there or if there are mucky, pop them out, clean them up and put them back in. Now away from the hitch head itself, we need to look at the corner steadies. We need to make sure that they all operate really well. If you've got a drill, don't be tempted to use it at this point. What we're doing is we're making sure that each corner steady is free running and then it goes up and comes down without any hesitation at all. If they are slightly grimy or graunchy to feel, they probably will need cleaning. They do get dirty. Remember that they're packed with grease and they get road dirt on them as well. So it's highly possible that they will need cleaning and I'm going to cover this in a future video. The jockey wheel itself we'll need a look at just make sure that it can wind up and wind down it's free running and there's no issues with the jockey wheel at all so make sure that that's all in good working order for you as well and then finally we just want to make sure that the brakes are all okay now we're not asking you to go and service the brakes we're just making sure that the handbrake comes on and off and that when the handbrake is off the caravan can move. Now if you have got a seized brake or if it does feel as if it's not working at all you probably may need to have someone look at that for you if you're unsure about what to do. The hitch is probably the most critical part of the caravan in terms of safety and performance so make sure it's in good working order. If you're not at all confident, if you're not at all sure about what you're doing get somebody who knows what they are doing out to have a look at your caravan. But next what we want to go and look at is the tyres and make sure that they're in good working order. There's a couple of things we need to check with the tyres to make sure that they're fit for purpose. The first of all is the tyre age. You're looking for a code on the tyre which is a four digit code uh, and it's preceded by the word dot usually and what we're looking for is a four digit code. Now my tyres say they are 4714 what that means is the date of manufacturer was the 47th week of 2014. I go with the five year principle and the fact is this, if they're under five years old they're fine, when they reach five replace them. Also we need to check the tread depth. Karens usually don't run out of tread but it's worth checking nonetheless. We need to ensure that the tread is at least 1.6 mil across 75% of the actual face of the tyre. So go around and make sure that it's perfectly okay. Get yourself a little tread depth tester, that's easy to say isn't it, and then just plot it around the tyre and make sure that it's well within tolerance. One of the most important things we need to check with a caravan tyre is the general condition of the sidewalls. You see, rather than wearing out the tread, what caravans do do, because they stand still for so long, is they do break the sidewalls of the tyres. So have a look for cracks, have a look for breaks, splits, etc. If you see a crack, if you see a split, you will need to replace the tyre. And then obviously, finally, 
last two things we need to do, we need to make sure that the tyre pressures are all okay and we need to make sure that the torques are okay on the wheel nuts. This of course is something that you should be doing before you set off anyway, but it's a good time to check it now nonetheless. Right, we're almost done, almost done, but for us to check the next bit, we actually need to connect the electrics from the car to the caravan and we're going to check the road lights. Now obviously your caravan may be different to ours. You may have two seven pin connections. You may have the 13 pin connection that we have. In either case, we need to make sure that the plugs are in good working order. They're not cracked, not split, and that there's no cables hanging out the back of them and they're in good functioning order. If any of the pins are slightly corroded, what we can do is we can get in there with some switch cleaner and a toothbrush and just brighten up the surfaces of all the pins. If we're generally happy that the condition of the plug is okay, what we're going to do is connect it up to the car and we're going to check each one of the lights individually. Now this is usually a two person job with you sat in the car switching the lights on and off, but you can do it by yourself. As you can see, I'm on my Todd today, but we can do it nonetheless. What we're going to do is we're going to switch all the lights on. We're going to start off with a hazard and we're going to nip down the back of the van and we're going to make sure that all the lights are working. Obviously, this is something that we need to check before we set off anyway, but it's a good idea to check if anything has broken during the winter months. So we're going to look at the marker lights, we're going to look at the indicator lights, we're going to look at the lights at the back of the caravan. We're going to check every single light, give it a good tap and make sure that all the lenses are in good working order. Make sure that we're happy that nothing is broken and that we don't have that strange effect that when you turn the indicator lights on, the brake lights also pulsate as well. If you do get that, nine times out of ten, it means we've got a bad earth connection from the plug at the front of the caravan. That may need some attention. If it has got a corroded plug, as I said, what we need to do is brighten it up with some switch cleaner. Failing that, if you still get a problem and there is a problem with the electrics, get an auto electrician out to have a look. It could be a fault in the car itself. Now on top of checking the lights, it's also a good idea to make sure that we've got some spares in the caravan as well. And what I tend to do is I carry a spares pack of every single bulb that I would ever possibly need on the caravan. I also make sure I've got a vast array of spare fuses. Now the fuses in the caravan here are the blade type, so I make sure that I carry those around. So the last thing we need to do now is check the gas. Now I want to stress that we're not actually going to be doing anything with the gas. What we are simply going to do is to check that the regulator is okay. If you've got a caravan with the regulator fitted on the caravan and not on the bottle, we need to make sure that the tailpipe is in good operating order. Make sure there's no splits, cuts or marks or blemishes on that pipe. If there is, replace it straight away. What we are doing is we're just making sure that the gas supply is okay. So we're going to connect the bottle up, we're going to switch on the cooker and we'll make sure that we've got a nice blue flame. If we haven't got a blue flame, if it's yellow or burning slightly erratically, stop immediately and contact your caravan dealer. It's also a good idea to check the smoke alarm. We should replace the battery no matter how old it is. We need to do this every year. So replace the battery. Also test the smoke alarm as well. Make sure that it functions correctly. If you've got a carbon monoxide monitor in there as well, make sure that that's working correctly and check the date on it as well because some of them expire after some time. If you've got a fire blanket and a fire extinguisher, check that they're in good operating order and check that they are still in date. Right, and there we go guys, that is the springtime checks now complete. There are obviously more systems that we can check, things like the TV antenna, the microwave, the toilet, the two, you know, the list never ends. Point is, this is a very simple guide and one that we can all use to make sure that our caravans are nice and safe. Now, as I said, this is a downloadable guide. You can get it from our website. The link is down below, so please feel free to go and download it, use it, and uh, I hope it becomes invaluable to you. Now, as I have said in this video, I will repeat it, but this does not replace the idea of taking your caravan for a service. Your caravan should be serviced at least once a year. So that's it from us this week. I hope this has been useful for you. Feel free to comment down below, and I'll see you next week. Take care now. Bye-bye.